Welcome to the first greatest podcast in the world. Oh my god, we've had so many cool people today. Uh, this is episode number 49. Very exciting, very awesome, very positive. Um, I think at the very beginning of the episode, Jerry said, I think we have too many people. I'm like, no, we don't have enough. <laughs> but this is about the about Max we have. So in reverse alphabetical order, we have uh, Sunny Bean the Kitty. I'm Cord Kitty. Jerry Husky. Jay the Sabertooth Tiger. Jason Cougar. Atticus Wolf. And Alex Wuski. All right. Let's get to the introductions. Um, tell us about yourself, Sunny Bean. Hi. Um... I'm Sunny. I am a digital commission artist and a cemetery lawn care worker. Very cool. I'm Cord Kitty. I am a full-time kitty. Uh, I like uh, hanging out at home. Uh, I like taking care to taking care to kids, and I love doing genealogy because it's so fun. I get to look at study dead people who have no relevance at all. A bunch of old farmers. It's great. Um, Jerry Husky, who is you? I'm a husky. I've been in the fandom since 2003. Recently survived an ice storm. Was the ice storm? I'm, I'm, guess, I'm assuming it was very cold. I thought there was a big ice storm in Texas, but not where your neck of the woods is. In Georgia and South Carolina. Power was out till 2 a.m. Very scary stuff. Sounds very chilly. Jay, the saber tooth tiger, tell us about you. Um. Hey, I'm Jay, the saber tooth tiger. I. Used to, I'm gonna be honest, I used to like gaming a lot. I was planning on becoming a voice actor and so on. Jason Cougar, tell us about yourself. Hey, I'm Jason. I'm a Cougar. I've been in the fandom for about 11 years so far. And uh, my hobbies, I just actually seem to be career. I am currently going to school for gunsmithing. Very cool. I mean, there's got to be a lot of pew pewing out there, right? Pew pew pew. Tons of pew pews. Absolutely. Um, Atticus Wolf, tell us about yourself. Um, I am recently graduated. I have um, a degree in aeronautical engineering technology, actually. So we're, um, we're engineers who actually do things. Quote a um, representative from Lockheed Martin. He, uh, he said, oh, great, we finally have an engineer who can do things. Um, right now, I am a full-time looking for a job. Yes, it is a very engaging position. It's talking to a lot of people by your computer, surrounded by your childhood. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people I think looking for work. I know there's uh, there's a lot of people needing workers. I think aren't they aren't they having a huge shortage in the truck drivers and uh, and even school teachers? I think with substitute teachers, they're having a extreme shortage. Yeah, with um, mechanics in my field, people talk about the pilot shortage. The mechanic shortage is three times that big. So if you're looking to make just as much money as a pilot with less risk try to become a mechanic well yeah i think the, but the hardest part is getting the training finding a uh, a place to give you either free training or paid training like that sounds like a a, a real tough thing everyone's got to have a lot more skills um although with the internet it's a lot easier to teach yourself skills uh, how, how would you go about getting training for this uh, field that needs uh, needs workers because trust me a lot of the people listening to this they are dying for a job right now um i would have to recommend i would start out with welding it's just a wider job that you can get and if you get your certified welder certificate it isn't just aviation that you can go into you can go into auto you can go into pretty much any field that involves metal um also I would look to get your airframe and power plant certification. It's a lot of work. It can be and is really difficult, but it will really pay off if you get the certification and you can go literally anywhere. And you you know you're talking well, a lot about metal work. I'm looking at your uh, Fursona avatar picture. It looks like it's made out of metal as well. I'm assuming there's some connection. Oh yeah, I hopped on that trend with the I hopped on the Progen trend. I figured that I'd have a lot of um, ideas about it, like um, the model, quote-unquote, that I created was um, designed for 
deep space exploration and the general panels that surround it have just sort of marks of radiation from being in deep space so much and how they're interchangeable and how you'd always see on synths like oh there's this white pure white me for it's like more of a creamier i just i wanted to be more unique instead of this oh we're white black and gray oh look we can take our tails off okay wow All right. That sounds great. I love how creativity is a big thing that brings a lot of the fan together. Now let's get to the introduction of our last but not least, Alex Wusky. Yes, uh, my name is Alex. I go to college for music industry, which is kind of a fantastic degree. I just got done with my first semester. Um, I'm hoping to actually create a record label and become a music producer, even though that I'm already on that path. I help with a concert promotion, help run an antique business. And I'm actually the pitcher for my college baseball team. I have many hobbies, such as collecting things and going out and doing stuff. And I heard that you uh, like to do this kind of burping sound. That's kind of cool. Okay, I will show you the crazy burp. <laughs> Wait, was that from your, I, yes, from your brain mean. and your body, or was that from, like, a program? I'm so confused. Um, that's my brain, my body, my mouth, and my tongue. And oh, so so it sounds like you're stuff. a professional beatboxer. That's what I'm assuming by that. I'm not professional. But I'm you not could professional, be. but, like... No beatboxer. I've, I've, I've already had world-class training. Yeah. Dang. Well, that's obviously a talent we're going to have to uh, talk a bit more, even though it's not on the topic list. I think oh, we should no. check it out a bit more. One thing I okay. would love to uh, get to, because I just added a bunch of Telegram stickers of this Agretzko. Uh, this is a incredibly creative, interesting anime. You see, when you look at it at first, it looks like some sort of a spinoff of Hello Kitty, but it's for adults. So, uh, Jerry has to so, tell us uh, what you can. I have watched... All seasons so far, but don't worry, no spoilers from me. But it is incredible so far. You you really owe it to yourself to binge watch it, you know, whenever you get the time. Uh, it's slice of life, well, I guess slice of work life, of the trials and tribulations of working an office job as an accountant. Uh, my dad was one, but anyway. Yeah, it's pretty good so far. If you like uh, furries and you liked The Office at some point, you'll like this. Now, one thing you're missing with the main character's connection with karaoke. Could you talk about that a little bit? Agretsuko, which uh, stands for Aggressive Retsuko, who is the main character. Uh, She likes to do metal karaoke to vent out her frustrations. I don't know how it's done. They, They have separate voice actors for both scenarios, but if it's the same voice actress, I would be floored to say the least, but it's probably not. Yeah, like with Disney movies, often they have a different actor for the you know the voice and different actor for the uh, singing. Especially, I mean, honestly, when I first saw it, the first impression I got was the singing voice was a male. You think that's possible? Yeah, could be. yeah, it could be possible. So the the whole funny thing about it is this person looks just this innocent little cute thing. And then they they sound like this just otherworldly monster because they're doing this scream metal style and and they're getting rid of all of their um, just their angst and pain from their their job and like her boss is this pig who's just he's a pig and I think a lot of people could kind of I mean they they could understand that you know they have like bosses they don't like coworkers that just make them go nuts so I feel like it connects to adults on a very primal level like everybody wants to compl- just uh, get rid of that uh, excess stress from work right exactly it shows that you don't need uh raunchiness cursing or sex not that I have a problem with those but you don't necessarily need that to connect to adult audiences and, and this anime is proof of that. And what I like is it doesn't seem to have a trope that you expect to see in most animes. Like there, there's not like you know it, it's very original and it, uh, especially for a furry audience, it um, it's you know very appealing. And honestly, this is coming from somebody I've only seen one episode, but already I'm pretty blown away by it. Yeah, as uh, anyone else should be. I hope you'll you'll get time to watch the whole thing through eventually. 
I mean, I guess your kids could get in on it, but they wouldn't get any of the jokes, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> like for me. What when I'm choosing what my kids watch, it's it's got to be strictly educational. And I hate to say, whenever I watch an episode of um, Paw Patrol, the first thing I think is this is not educational. It's like, oh, teamwork is great. N that's that. No, I'm sorry. That's that, I, that's not a lesson. That's not. The, 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 I don't know. Like for me personally, I feel like Paw Patrol is not educational. Sorry for, for sorry for hating on it. I have to, I have to I have to throw a oh no no it's fine. I, I I just I hate the idea of like hey but this is a good show for kids. It's just teamwork and you know fighting people and violence. That's good. It's like no no it's not. It's bad. Stop it. Uh, no it's cringe. Uh, may, may I intervene? You can. I actually okay. Um, I actually have a good uh, kid show recommendation. A good kid show recommendation for me would be um, Bluey. Oh, they love Bluey. No, and what I love about Bluey is oh. they actually employ child actors, and that's great because when you have a bunch of adults <laughs> pretending to be kids, it's like, "Ooh, boy, I'm a little kid. Don't you, don't you believe me?" It's like, no, I, I don't, I don't believe you. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, like, like when they hire thirty somethings to play as high school students. Yeah, yeah, yeah that never works. Um, the a, a favorite that my kids have is Blippy right now. Like he is basically an Air Force veteran who just made up this character that he originally used to, I think, uh, educate his nephew. Don't quote me on that, but um, and it's just it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. He just goes to these different places and says like, "Oh, this is blue. This is green. One, two, three. It's 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 awesome." So the, I mean, literally, like my my three year old, he doesn't want to like he barely is able to say very many words, but he, he's able to say B L I P P I B B. It's like he doesn't even know to say my name but he doesn't want to say blip it's just it's insane it's very funny <laughs> cute they both yeah they both learned how to say blippy before daddy <laughs> pretty much <laughs> nice. well okay that's not completely true but it's still it's a funny thought um <clears throat> okay but yes a gretzko and that's available on netflix am i wrong yes netflix okay, currently good. So everyone should check that out. Um, also, on the topic, does anyone recommend any other type of interesting uh, um, animations that are created mainly for adults that are available on some platform? Beastars. Yeah, Beastars is pretty good. Very cool. All right, let's yeah, get um, on to the next topic. Poster, the medium-sized poster right now. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the next topic. And this is one I've been very excited about. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Um, we have a, a cemetery worker who has some stories and stuff to tell us about uh, working in a cemetery. So, Sunny Bean, tell us your experience. All right. So, I work for Cemetery Lawn Care Service. We take care of the grass around, you know, the graves and whatnot. And we also take care of the leaves in the in the fall, and then when the season's over, or off for the winter, then we come back and we take over those grave blankets and throw them in the dumpster. Now, <clears throat> when I first started working for this company that I'm not going to name because I can't for legal reasons, I was first on a wood crew. Wood crew is basically you use a wood whip and you walk around the headstone. More of the, uh, the hygiene of the job would be. Whenever something breaks, or someone comes to complain, if something breaks, we'll just, you know, push it to the truck and fix it. Or we'll have to dry rig it to some point. If we break something off the deck, we'll just put the caster wheels back on and, you know, hope for the best. One thing that we experienced that was, I guess, off the table, we were leaving one of the sites on one of them you know, empty highway type roads with the two lanes, kind of back road type. We were all just sitting there chilling, no cars by us, nothing, and we just hear like footing on the side of the truck like someone's slamming their hands against it, all the way down the side of the truck. Well, that sounds like a very interesting job. Um, I know, um, I, I heard this really interesting story on this one uh, genealogy podcast. There was some sort of cemetery somewhere sort of that was cemetery. not being maintained. In fact, it became a dog park. So we had these dogs like pooping and urinating all over these gravestones. I'm just like, oh my God, I wonder how many ancestors we have that are just, you know, on cemeteries that are just not being maintained. 
And it's it's possible. There's a lot of family at cemeteries that just are not just you know that they're in the middle of nowhere and they're just um, uh, you know they have gravestones that are totally broken up in pieces and just uh, yeah it's that chaos. One of the cemeteries that I work at is from the 1800s, so there are headstones that are falling apart, teetering. One time, one of my was uh, showing the normal lines through them. Now, this is a, a sort of morbid question. Have you ever, like, just gone and you're maintaining and then you find, oh, my God, I'm related to this person? We do maintain some of our coworkers' family and whatnot and our friends' family. Yeah, yeah. I've, as part of uh, genealogy research, I'm very aware of uh, find find your grave. So I'm able to find like pictures from uh, different ancestors and stuff. And it's really fascinating just seeing. Uh, and you know what? One really crazy thing. Uh, it, it's really like my uh, I have a second great grandpa. They actually misspelled his last name. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is. But that's that's pot. There's illiteracy happened all the time. Like if you were born and someone said, yeah, your name is uh, your name is a Sonny Brian. It's like Sonny Brian. And let's say if you never learn how to read and write, you'll just write brain. It could be it could be anything. Uh, you'll write it in any sort of way, and then on your grave, it'll be it could be anything. So uh, it's incredible how uh, you get to see history when you look at these incredible graves and just what you know it teaches you about history. And stuff. Yeah, I, I have a related comment. Um, you know, on my off times during like uh, spring and summer, what I usually do is that I live uh, next to a cemetery. And what I do, I actually go there and clean some gravestones and stuff because, you know, I, I don't like to see all the, the stones, you know, covered in moss and dirt and, you know, like not properly maintained. So in my off time, sometimes I go there and if there's like a, a soldier that's been laid there, um, you know, I put a penny on there and it's just a thing that me and my family do. I don't know if we do it everywhere, but it, it, like usually if you see a soldier uh, soldier's grave you just put a penny on there as in respect yeah i from memory about a, a year ago i was at this one cemetery and uh, i saw just a pile of leaves and i was like oh so i put brushed off the leaf and there's a world war ii veteran i'm like oh i wonder wonder who would who knows about this person or who you know who's around who's related and just felt bad i was like oh my god like that's that could be all of us at some time at some point we're going to be on a grave that you can't even see because it's completely covered in vines and grass and it's a morbid thought but it's uh hey you know it's true that could that could be us at some point so uh want to so the people who maintain these graves like they're they're doing a great service for for uh, society for sure and the, the the best part about that is the graves and location may sometimes be forgotten, but the memory of you for other people aren't. Yeah. And I, and I like how social media, like you, you have, you, when you have people taking pictures of everything all the time, now you could see what, you know, videos of your loved ones and photos of your loved ones. And that's, that's great. There's um, one time during the last cleanup of the season, it was raining a lot because it was closing fall. So the front fields were really wet at one of our sites, and one of our mowers got stuck. So my boss drove the truck out to tow the mower out. He got the mower out, and the truck was stuck. So the groundskeepers decided to get their little, you know, machine they used to dig the graves and try to roll out there and then they got stuck well so we had to be yanked out onto a, a tow truck a tow bed and we look down and we see ruts that are about six inches deep just all through the field and whenever we run over a rut normally even if it's a shallow one we feel the bumps on the mowers so that's not going to be very fun next season but if, if the grass is too wet for you to walk on, chances are it's too wet for you to mow. Just rule of thumb. I've been there one too many times. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for that topic. Let's get to the next topic. Um, uh, Atticus, you, uh, you, you told, you told me um, something that uh, kind of reminded me of experience I had. Like for me, when I moved 
Um, I, I so I, basically I moved to the East Coast and I moved back to the West Central Valley. Then I moved to the Bay Area. So and I had this just and I had a chance to visit my alma mater, San Jose State, and it was so surreal. Like all these places that were originally giant wide spaces suddenly had giant bulky buildings in the middle of them. I'm like oh my gosh, all the all my favorite restaurants they were gone. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. And they were replaced by these sort of like, um, I don't know, these fancy schmancy things, you know. Um, so please uh, tell us about your, you had a kind of a similar or a experience uh, when you came back after uh, graduating, right? Yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. I, um, I never really had a full year of experiencing how things were changing. While I was still in college, I mean, the longest I would stay was about three months during summer break. I think the one thing that really stuck out the most was this um, natural gas plant that I actually did a photography project on in high school. Every day when I drive back um, from school in high school, I'd take a picture of this and develop it. And it was crazy seeing now after four years how built up it was smoke reaching into the sky and this forest that i used to play around in and everything all the childhood stuff that i usually do is just gone it's sad in a sense but it brings more jobs especially with covid so i guess there is that that um positive there actually was quite a big rally against it in my home, hometown about some of the development because farming is a big, big deal here. The farms that some of the people have had have been generations, like hundreds of years, people have owned these farms and now they want to come in and build a Toyota plant. It's, it's crazy and seeing how people have unified against that, it really... It really gives me a lot of hope in humanity. My dad actually was on TV um, on one of the reports that they did. They had a represent, re representative from the county come and say, oh, all right, this is how we plan to chop this up. And here's where we'll put this and here's where we'll put that. And my dad came up and I think he said, why do you keep building all these places um, spewing out smoke? My my wife just wants a Sears. <laughs> um, it's just it's just funny on how they had no like plans for like retail, you know, and things to keep people happy. Uh, I don't know. I could keep going on about it, but you guys would fall asleep. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm still here listening. Like I completely agree with you. Um, one of one of my uh, childhood playgrounds over in uh, Wisconsin were torn was torn down for a parking lot <laughs> they extended the parking lot for a um oh man what was it it was like this small little um you know like a small uh, strip mall right yeah they replaced my childhood playground with a strip mall and i'm sitting here like well at least, at least we can play on top of cars now <laughs> uh, yeah 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 it yeah, was uh Somebody else at that meeting, um, he looked up where that representative lived, and he lived actually in the next county over in one of like the rich people sort of locations right next to like the Best Buy and everything else. Uh, of uh, course, he did, which has been sort of like developed with upper middle class to upper like one percent. And this guy yelled out, and he's like, Well easy for you to say that when you're living in the hills, you know? It's like, I've never lived that close to the farmland, so I'm not sure about the, uh, how it all works. But all I know is they're building a Costco somewhere near me now. I'm like, yay, build that Costco. Thank you. Yeah, I, I lived in the, I live in the suburbs. So it's not right next to farmland, small little town, and it's slowly becoming bigger and bigger into a city. And I don't want that. I'm sitting here like, I'm happy with like 30,000 people. I don't want 100,000 people. Come on, leave us alone. Where we have actual historical sites that are so old that they can't be knocked down no matter how much. You would have to have like an executive order to tear down some of the structures in my town. And like, like, the whole like, checkmate is that, oh, they're sending it out to some of these people's farms as being like yeah. a historical site. 
like if you think about it like when you're looking at like a small town growing into like a larger city after you leave it makes you feel old and it kind of makes you look back at the moments you had in those spots that aren't there anymore it's kind of like a a weird perspective nostalgia. on life is how things don't last forever. Yeah, I agree. Nostalgia. Yep, nostalgia. Of, yeah. Oh. Yeah. This also nostalgia reminds me, is where it's if at. we have any if we have any younger listeners, I have a very important message for you. Two things. One, if you are in grade school, none of your friendships matter. <laughs> I have not talked to a single person from grade school. The only time that I met was because of a funeral, and I did not recognize anybody. You, unless you are best friends on like Facebook or whatever, great friends, you yeah. know, with people, don't worry about it. And if you're sad about that, this is also this applies also to bullies and in, into high school. I have known like the most popular person in my high school. It was one of like the real backwater sort of universities that she went to for about three or four semesters dropped out and then she completely disappeared into south america (laughs) i mean this is like the heritage that you get from high school popularity do not worry about it it will it doesn't mean a single thing be smart stay in school do your work i know i sound like an adult now but i am Holy crap. <laughs> oh, wait, I have a cough. A gray muzzle. Oh, I'm sorry. I just uh, had a cough. I'm 20. I'm 20. And on my behalf, I'm younger. So I can also say the same. Remember, kids, stay in school and kiss the homies goodnight. Yeah, if you stay in school long enough, you get to go to college where you being the smartest person is not the smartest person anymore because you're up against international. Yeah, person, like me. Which will always guilt you. And then trust me, trust me, don't fail school. Because then soon, trust me, you're going to go into online school. I went through that. And trust me, you go like, oh, man, I can't wait to go out and hang out with friends. Oh, wait, I have none. (laughs) Because you're all by yourself in your home. Trust me, it's not the life you want to live. It's very lonely and boring. And plus, you don't learn anything because you're on your computer. You're going to be playing cool math games. Come on, man. Oh, no, I just made it sound fun. <laughs> <laughs> cool math games. Yeah, that's not kind of fun. <laughs> All right, let's pass the torch to the next topic. So, Alex, tell me about what you were saying about a queen, queen database, something like that, along those lines. Uh, education. Yeah, yeah um, what I was really trying to say was... That I've been working on this coin database where I'm trying to take all these coins in my collection and put them in this online website called Numista, which I, if there's any coin printers, you already know what the website is all about. Oh, yeah, you're but talking about Bitcoin, you know, right? Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Uh, Dogecoin. That's I'm coin sorry, I'm talking about Sheep coin and Dogecoin. Don't talk to me about that Bitcoin. <laughs> Web. Um, <laughs> Elon Musk Plebs. became such a meme that he broke money. Okay, so maybe you're talking about Honestly, physical Bitcoin. coins. Okay. Flex on the board. Yes, I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about physical coins and like basically it's online database, like I said before, but it lists all the coins in the world. And then you can actually go into that list, find your coin, and then add it to your virtual collection if you have it. And then it can give you an option such as what condition it's in. You can put notes on it. You can upload pictures of your coin. And yeah, it will actually tell you the value of your coin right now. I have currently the coins uploaded to the website. And if you give me a second, it will tell me exactly how much the collection is worth. For, no. Just for those names. Would, coins. would you say your collection would uh, rise in value if you suddenly made all of your pictures into non-fungible tokens? NFT, baby, let's go! Uh, I'm sorry, could, can you, like, restate your question? If suddenly you transform these pictures of these coins into non-fungible tokens, will that add value to the coin collection? No, it's just, I take pictures of the physical coin itself. I own the coin. 
Oh my. So, like, the value of the coin is there. But do you still own the knife? It feels of like it's a, the NFT it's of like it. it's a form of NFT. <laughs> I don't, my uh, grandmother would love me no, because you she would love pit. you like a son. <laughs> uh, no, because what would happen is the person that owns the coin owns the rights to the photo. It's kind of like owning negatives of like the original photo of, let's say, a model. It's kind of that way. You own the rights to that photo if it's ever posted on a magazine or anything. Uh, but um, in this case, it's coins. Um, you, you just described an NFT, but with coins instead of pictures. Pretty much. Alex, I'm sorry. You're, uh, you're investing in NFTs. I'm sorry. Yep, just like my icon. <laughs> um, Downward spiral, yeah, Alex. So. Downward spiral. God, you really got a lot of energy today. My bad. I'm sorry. I'll mute myself. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. You're fine, man. Um... The values of the coin collection so far, which is only the 90 coins I've put up. By the way, I have thousands of coins, but just for the 90 coins I uploaded, it says that my collection is worth $29,000. And that's actually a price that's calculated based off of condition, mintage, which is the amount that were made of that certain year and location. And it's really awesome. But I've been collecting coins for ever and have been really meticulously putting them together in my collection. And I hate to say... Do you, my, is there my, like anything you guys collect? Well, here's the thing. I collect coins as well, but I literally haven't looked at them for like 15 years. Like, they're in some box somewhere, and I'm sure if I look for them enough, I'll find them. But yeah, just random foreign uh, uh, currency. Okay. Uh, Jay, y your topic was discovering the furry fandom. So let me guess. The first investment you made was a uh, $14,000 fursuit, right? And then then you have to go to the hotel, but $500 well, a night. Gotta be honest, when I first discovered the furry fandom, I I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just something group, but that's it. But then I had a childhood friend who is a furry, and he told me all about it. I was like, okay. So as we kept hanging out more often, I felt like I should be one. So then I became a furry. And honestly, it's a long, long ass story. When I when I became a furry, blah 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 blah, I was confused. So I went to one of my friends who was in a huge group who was in the furry things, and he was like, "Hey, uh, you recently became a furry, right?" I was like, "Yeah." So after discussing my persona, blah blah blah, the next day I got a call from my friend's mom, and I was utterly mad. My friend passed away due to a car accident. It sucked so bad. So I was like, you know what? Since he passed away, I might as well pay his respects. Become the greatest furry ever. Just get a fursuit. Go to conventions and etc. Doing since I first became a furry, I thought it was going to be bad. Like they're going to treat me some kind of mean way, I guess you would say. But honestly, they didn't. They treat me nicely. I don't know how to subscribe the furry fandom as a good way, you know? Like, they're so good, like, you feel like you're in heaven, or basically. We welcome you with open arms. Yeah, that's the, that's the same person who said it, too. Like, like even if you're different or not, we cherish, we open good arms to you. And I was like, wow. The furry fandom is not bad as I thought. Yeah, and when I think about uh, discovering the fandom, I think there is a lot uh, there's a lot to be said like there's a whole terminology there's a whole uh, you know backstory of everything and most importantly you know it's not you know it's not all good it's not all bad like all furries they're not all good they're not all yeah. bad but you, as long as you it's just like with you know with real life outside of the fandom you you choose your crowd you choose who you want to be around you choose uh who you want to talk to mm -hmm. and as long as you uh you know mm -hmm. uh, surround yourself with positive people uh They'll, you know, embrace you with open arms, and that's uh, very positive. Yeah, there really are, honestly. But, uh, yeah, there's some skeletons in the closet, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Phantom has some skeletons. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> understatement of the sun, sorry. But, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of a, a, a fandom veteran. I've been to, like, about 50 furry cons, uh, owned about, a, like, a fursuit, owned three heads in the... It's a good thing the first one disappeared. Oh, my first head? No, 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 no. That got that got sold to someone. 
Oh, the creepy one? No, 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 no. The, fir the first um, one was uh, completely different. Eventually uh, got into the hands of someone completely different. I, uh, I, I have a quick fact for y'all. Yeah. So my real name, uh, all I'm going to say is my last name is Merlino. Have fun finding who. That's a common Italian last name. Um, but the owner of the fandom, or not the owner, the uh, original founder, his last name was Mark Merlino. You know, he was actually Psych, on our I'm last related, episode. I wish I was. You know, if you check out our last episode, I think he was the one of the main uh, special guests, so you could uh, have that interview with him. He's like a he's a walking history book, really. Like I said, my last name is Merlino. So, fortunately, I'm not related to him. Wish I was. Really do. So, to be honest, though, I am going to my first ever furry convention, and I feel the reason why is due to you know I need more friends. That's furries, and you know, so I decided maybe if this year didn't get canceled. Or doesn't, I will be glad and go to that convention. Very good. If you don't mind, which convention? Uh, Anthrocon, because that's the only closest convention I can go to. That's in uh, Pittsburgh, correct? Yeah, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In what month? Isn't it June? No, it's, like it's July. It's June, 30th, June, 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 July, I, I think. I don't know, June or July, one of those two, when it starts. Hey, like, Jay, I remember quick? you before, it was like July 4th. Jay, real quick? Yeah, but this year they did June 30th. I'm, I'm, I may still be here for school, but if not, if I graduate early, um, hope to see you there, man. Oh, thank you. I, I'll, I'll meet you there, too. I, uh, I walked behind the camera of uh, the 2021 convention. I walked with my dog, and I waved in the camera. I walked four hours just to wave in a camera. <laughs> I have no car, but I walked four hours to wave at a camera. That's, so That's dedication. Cameras are fun. There. All right, so now we've talked about the nice, bright, happy part of the fandom. I would like to have my topic be gossip. I think this is a really good topic. It's very juicy. So this is um, something that uh, has obviously, you know, happens in lots of social circles, but gossip is so much fun. You know, it's really, it's enjoyable to kind of hear like, you know, you know, stuff going on and, uh, you know, what's going, you know, all the, all the, the nasty little things going on behind the scenes, but it's hard to know. Yeah. Like that one first shooter that dabbed. Oof, gross. Yeah. Disgusting. No. Um, um, so I, uh, what is what has been everyone's experience with this? Because it's it's like hard for me to uh, pinpoint how you could you know verify <laughs> gossip or not. Like, what's the best way to to figure out what is true and what is not? Uh, talk to the source, like the main person they're talking about, or if you're like me, just take psychology. <laughs> you pretty much know the answer. That's that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Like I remember, I had a lot of people tell me that you know Uncle Kage is blah blah blah, blah and I met him in person. He was freaking the nicest guy I've, I've met in the fandom. I did Damn. too. He he freaking uh, guy. He, he bought me from some shrimp Alfredo. I was like, oh my god, like, he doesn't even know me, and he got me this. This is incredible. I gave him a hug. Get on my level. I'm gonna be honest though, I've had some rumors about me for the first time saying that like a lot of junk, and honestly, I know for a fact I don't do that. Guys, I heard like, Jay I've been is telling a them that. Head. Okay, Jay is a doo doo head. Jay is a big doo doo head. He's a doo doo head. Okay. Big poo poo. Big poo poo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> poo poo. But gonna be honest though. All honesty, people say that, oh, Jay is honestly the worst person I ever met. Bro, you don't even know I'm the worst person. You're, you're talking rumors and yet... You it. Know, Coming from another feline, you're cuddly f***ing fricker. Sorry. People say I'm the worst person ever, even though they haven't met me. Like, bro, how do you know me if you don't know, like, how do you know that if you don't met me or anything like that? You want my honest first impression of, of you? What? I bet you give great, like, like firm handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact because I actually met a basketball player, like a real life basketball player, in, in like middle school or something. And I and he said, "Get thanks for the firm handshake." I was like, "Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> pay attention in psychology class. See what I'm saying? I nailed it." And, you know, because it's so easy to access so many people, like, like if you see just any rumor about anyone, it's very easy to go like, oh, I'll just block those and go to the people who don't have any rumors. And it's really easy to, to, to kind of do that, right? I mean, in this internet age, there's just so many people out there. It's just so easy to just kind of like, you know, block and move on. And it's, uh, you know, it's uh, you better be safe than sorry, right?
All right, so I guess one final word about gossip. It is a lot of fun to listen to, and it's enjoyable, but to really get to the bottom of it, you kind of have to, you know, go to the source and go like, okay, is this is this really true? And maybe that's a good way to kind of get to know something. Well, right? girl, to be honest, though, gossip is like a mixture of both fun and like mean. I guess you could say. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, like oh, mean, I mean girls. What I was right? gonna say, um, if if life was easy. Where would all the fun be? Where would all the challenges be? It's like a video game. If a game was too easy, then it's a it's where's the fun in it? It's the side quest. Yeah. It's this yeah, exactly. It's the difficult side quest <laughs> that you're forced to do whether you like it or not. Sorry, hun. Now actually on the topic of difficult side quest, uh Jason Cougar, I want to interview you about a difficult side quest you had oh, in life. Man. Um and I'm really curious from its infancy how um i know you you kind of got uh brought to kind of the wrong crowd and yeah and it kind of changed uh, your perspective on things and uh, i really want to hear about the divergence of what what happened from the beginning to end and it might might even begin now yeah how in depth should i go i'd say completely in depth because i feel like your story is something that needs to be heard because there's something there's it's a topic that a lot of people are talking about the topic of people kind of um not necessarily doing moral or ethical sins but doing (sighs) something that is kind of against um, what all of us deem is just against, being a part it's of against views, yes, public yeah, views, and yeah, like doing what it like what is um, normal and healthy, okay. like doing um, having ideas um, that help us function as society. Like when you have an idea which can, you know, that maybe have to do with you know taking down the government, revolution, and that stuff. That I don't think that could help any society. You know, any any anything. Correct. correct. So, but but you did get kind of taken into uh, a, a kind of a crazy world and I really want to hear it from the beginning uh, in depth because yeah. it's a story that needs to be heard I think they welcomed me with open arms turns out those arms were just an, an illusion but even before they so, like you, you before you even knew what a furry was before all that stuff how did it how did everything just I want to get to the very beginning uh, the very core the very start of the story okay so at the beginning I was in elementary school. <laughs> Good thing I poured a drink for this. <laughs> in elementary school, I uh, was bullied. I was in the, uh, some people call it the hood, some people call it the ghetto, some people call it hood love, you name it, right? Now, I'm, I'm a very, very white Mexican. That takes 47% uh, is English, so that's where the white comes from. 49 is Mexican. I always thought I was white till I took a DNA test. Um, and I, me and a few others were really bullied, and we were the only... Me and my friends were the only, I guess you can say, different outcasts or different... Okay, I'm just going to put it plain. I don't mean this in a bad way, but we were a different color than than the group, right? So you're saying that and, you think people might have bullied you because um, because of your race? Um, yes, and because, you know, we, we were like, we were the nerds. We were the hmm. typical white nerd group that always played Minecraft, uh, d- like, you know, D&D, play Pokemon, you know, like the typical loser nerds, right? Well, while everybody else had these, you know, nice expensive clothes, you know, they, they would always, you know, play, um, go out, play with the other popular kids and stuff. And, you know, we'd just be on our own talking about, I don't know, cool math games or something. And uh, me and my friends, we were usually the target, and I... That's not an assumption. That's uh, that's a straight up fact because you know we were actually even told that by the bullies. They're sitting here like, "Yo, dude, y'all are losers," and and they're like, like literally everybody else. Like even the bullies came up to us and said, "Yo, dude, we want y'all to leave this school, man. Like y'all aren't meant to be here. Y'all don't belong." And I said, I said a horrible thing, a, a horrible thing, and I don't want to repeat it because I don't want somebody to pull it out of context. You know what I mean? And let's just say that just made me as a target worse. And I was a kid, I was young and dumb. It wasn't the most beautiful time of my life. And so so that's where it first started. And I felt I was targeted by other people, right? And as I'm going through life, I always didn't think of the same type of people the same. And then I got involved into, uh, 
I guess you can say white pride groups or, or like anti-Semitic type stuff because you know, I thought what they believe and stuff was was the truth, even though now that I look at it, it's not the truth. It's just it's just they find something to blame us for, even though it's the truth. I mean, even though it's not the truth. Would you say the people in this group were kind of they had this victimhood mentality, like they were that they were like victims of bullying or victims of something? Like what the group what, what that they, I like, were in? Yeah, like what would motivate someone to join some like what would motivate the other people to join something like that? Being turned on by people that you thought had your back or just being bullied in a majority school that isn't like you and so okay so, so you think they, like oh i'm they, different so people bully me because i'm different so i'm just going to say stay with a group of people that are like me so then that ideology yeah. builds up so it sounds like they're disenfranchised outsiders that join this extremist fringe movement as a way to maybe get identity or feeling belonging i'm assuming correct yes then they join these groups to feel welcome and at home because when when where they used to be, they never were welcome with open arms like you are in the fandom. They they never were treated equally or even really even given a chance. Now is that with all of them? I would say that's most of them because some people they're just messed up people. Some people were just hurt really bad, and that's their what they seem as a last resort. Even though it it is it's it's not a last resort. There's other places you, you got to look. Because there's always the sun at the end of night. Because it may all seem dark, gloomy, but trust me, there's more beyond the horizon. And somehow you you got in touch with an even more harmful group called the furries. <laughs> no, sorry. The furry that's, that's a, sorry, yeah. That was a really bad... Uh, okay, well, okay, yeah, that's pretty... Yeah, yeah, we... Yeah. So. From, from what I've been told, it's like, oh, freedom of speech, you know, we're all welcome here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting here like... The world is quiet here. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting here like, you know what, let's enter here. And, you know, I joined with my already Nazi views and horrid views thinking like oh these are my people even though they weren't now w would you say for sure the raiders have done some real life harm you think they've really harmed the uh the fandom as a whole um with maybe spreading of extremist ideas well from what me and my friends gathered we're, we're done with that group but they don't really spread extremist ideas they're just unfiltered they're, they're, they're not a giant anti-Semitic group. They're just unfiltered. There's people there, like not all of them are. Some are. And like I said, it's unfiltered. And they think the First Amendment, you know, First Amendment means freedom of speech, right? But that doesn't mean freedom of consequence. So what you say will have consequences and they think that it shouldn't. And I'm sitting here like, well, yeah, but you can't control what other people think of you. If, if you have that one bad apple in the group, that's what your group's going to be known for. Right. And I think didn't uh, pa Patch did an article about it, I believe, that kind of highlighted the um, the more extreme factions. And I've kind of like, I mean, my opinion about it is when you join, well, just about every, if you go to a left wing group, there's going to be some communists. There's going to be some anarchists. Exactly. If exactly. you join any right wing group, there's going to be Nazis and fascists and they... And no matter what, when you when you hit the when extremes, you, you hit some will... very very ugly ideas that are um, you know. Yep. Yeah. That... When, when you find one side of politics or just views on life, there's going to be an extremist side on that. No matter what, like like you know, uh, here, here's an example. There's a Sonic fandom where people like Sonic, and then there's the Sonic fandom where they do, let's say, porn and. And you know, like um, make make weird fan fictions. Like that's like there's always going to be that weird extreme taboo that you think, oh, that doesn't dis exist here. Trust me, you're wrong. <laughs> but those are the ones that people like Patch or anybody in the media they want to interview first because they they have something 
not only something to to show, but also they are they are the extremes. They are the most interesting things to look at and observe. And uh, and it's not bad of him to do that. It's it's actually it's perfectly fine. But um, that's ultimately what exactly what the media does. They find the craziest furries they could find. People who are like, I'm a real animal. Yeah, I'm a wolf. I am bow wow wow. Look at my tail. On all like, levels but, except physical, I am a wolf. Because because if you cells. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it sells. Like, and, and then the average person's like, "Wow, furries are a bunch of freaking freaks. They they, they don't know they're human. What a bunch of idiots!" You know, that's and that's what ends up happening. So, it's this is not something I I point. I you know, if I was working in the media, I would do the same thing. I would interview the craziest yeah, person. Yeah, because you get bunch. money for more clicks. You get money for clicks. Exactly. So so yeah, I think um, what what patches was totally um totally normal and totally understandable. And I think it, I mean again, it's it's good to. Uh, sh I think shine a light on on the extremes and hey you know if you own a media company whatever interview the the extremes because that's that's what people want to read that's how you're going to sell paper correct but that's also I mean. shine light on the non-extremists you know people that because the world can't always be dark and gloomy yeah don't yeah. show the bad side show the show the other side the more humane side you know but 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 Jason at some point. Like you didn't notice that there was people with tails and like what's like well, what what are these weirdos like what are they doing here? They're just being them. They're just like they're just a passion for art. Like yeah. like you go to a museum, you see people scribbling on pieces of paper. That's going for like millions. But like what's at, to say at, that I can't do uh -huh. the same thing? But like <laughs> at what point? Like before the, the the looking at the raiders that you like that you were like oh. These are people who dress up as animals or whatever, and like, like, how did you discover the fandom exactly? Is that how you discovered the fandom? No, no, I, I discovered the fandom before and discovered the Raiders. And uh, you know, I, I've heard a lot about the Raiders, and I'm sitting here like, oh, they sound like horrible people. But I'm the type of guy that goes like, if they're horrible people, I gotta see for myself. Like, I'm that guy that goes like, oh, they can't be that bad. Let me see. Right now, there are some good people in the Raiders that. Honestly, if if they're listening, y'all need to leave. Trust me, it's it's not something you want to be a part in because you will you will be doxxed, you will be leaked, you will be spit on and kicked. Like it's it already has a bad reputation and it's not going to get changed anytime soon. Especially with huh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get dragged down for this, but especially especially with Foxler. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, since learned some he's, stuff. He's about not a good. Him. He's not a good person. Yeah, I mean, I've. I think I, I did interview him once, and um, what I mean, what what he said, and what I've heard from other people, they they don't match. They simply don't match up. So, um, it's very important. Talking to, to him firsthand, it's. You ever seen a house on the outside thinking it's gorgeous? You that you go in and there's a hole like it's just trashed, because that's Foxler. And you would say that there is. Do, do you Problems. think he, like, I mean, do you think he's, for first off, do you think he's honest? No, mm -hmm. only for the safety of his image. Mm -hmm. He could be honest to you. He could be. But more than likely, if he doesn't know you, he's going to, he's the only honest to you when it matters. Yeah, it kind of, it reminds me, like, if you're part of a, uh, like, a telegram group, and if the admin's a jerk, guess what? It's going to be a jerky group. <laughs> I mean, it's just going it, to... It, it, Correct. Wh whoever yep. is leading it, whoever is the, you know, the dictator or the, you know, the de democratically elected leader, um, <laughs> there is, um, yeah, um, very much the group is a reflection of of the uh, the leader. So it's very important to uh, talk about and think about and discuss for sure. I, you know, um, tell us about when you started to consider changing. Uh, this pathway to uh, to darkness. Oh, when I broke out of it, yeah, uh, was how I started to be seen and treated in those groups that I was in. They saw that I still had uh, what 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 is it? Mercy or hope for the people that apparently were supposed to hate. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, well, but they're not all bad. And then they got all mad at me, going like. Oh, you're a traitor! You're 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 filthy! Like we trusted you, blah blah blah. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, but you know, let let's talk to them. Let's give them a chance, you know, because because like maybe we've had it all wrong. And and then I just started to get pushed away, and I left groups 
the Nazi, white Semitic, blah, 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 because it soon turned toxic. And also, I found out some of my online friends were actually the types of people that we were supposed to hate. And I'm sitting here like, I can't hate them because, you know, they've been my friends and been with me for my whole life. And I never seen their skin color or knew their race and until later. And I'm sitting here like, you know what? I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. The closest friend I have, he's black and he's the, he's been with me for years. And, and just thinking of the fact that I got to hate him because of, of, of belief, I, I can't do that. What, what I used to do was horrid and, and disgusting, like without giving people chances. Like, yes, I, I used it, I, I guess you would say a coping mechanism or just a way to get away from it all. But it's not, it, it wasn't right at all. It, it was very disturbing, very very unpleasant and and with the raiders they turned on me and my friends and because you know we you know we talked back i mean we talked against foxler because you know we recently found out evidence about him and so we're sitting here like yo foxler is this true and he would stay silent and go and then spread rumors about me and them going like we steal money for like art and like you know we got our art but we stole it like i have never received art from anybody in uh furry raiders except for my friend and I always pay him back. And the fact that he was spreading those lies saying that, you know, like I'm a horrible human being and I'm sitting here like, we just wanted to talk in person, like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but yet you decided to bring it publicly. And then people turned against us. And, and not only that, we were being targeted by hate groups already. So my name was already out there. And, and you so, can kind of understand why, like there's, you know, obviously, I, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm, I'm half Ashkenazi Jewish. So obviously I do have ancestors who passed away in the Holocaust at some point or not ancestors, but like cousins, I believe. And it's a, yeah. so obviously, you know, it's a, an issue that, you know, people have been grappling with for, for generations, you know, the fact that, you know, during World War II, I mean, there were, there were Jewish fighter, uh, J Jewish fighter pilots that were flying above Germany and uh, they didn't bomb the trains because they didn't know the Holocaust was happening, which is because yeah. they kept it secret and uh, very, you know, hor horrifying part of history. So the fact that there's a bunch of people who are in the fandom who, you know, who are totally okay right, with that. Yeah. yeah, that's very, you know, a horrifying concept. But I'm, I guess what I want to learn from this interview is what can we do to get these lost people and bring them to a better place where they actually want to, um, where they want this society, uh, this diverse society to function with everyone together, working together, not worrying about what anybody's race uh, gender, gender identity, sex is, well, and just working together to make a better future. What would have helped me way early on is not bullying. That would have, if I never would have been bullied, none. Like I doubt any of this would have happened. So that's step one. But then again, we've <laughs> people have been trying to stop bullying for years. And also, the other one is is if you have a friend that thinks like that, or somebody that you know that thinks like that don't block them don't kick them out of your lives because that's just going to push them deeper and deeper into that situation they're going to be like oh look i'm right see like you pushed me away because of my beliefs no don't push them away talk to them one-on-one -on -one. if they don't know that say you're a uh, jewish mexican black uh hispanic like you name it, if they don't know that and if you build that bond with them tell them go like hey look this is who i am so what makes me different than anybody else because that's what really changed me like i found that out about my friends and i'm sitting here like i pictured you guys as like devils or like like you know horrible mean people but yet you're here taking me in as if i'm a family member so don't this goes with cancel culture too don't kick them out i mean some people deserve to be but but like when it comes to like people who are just you know lead it the wrong way don't push them deeper that way grab them and pull them back into the light. Like talk to them, help them out through this dark time they're having. Cause, because trust me, they, they need that. They need that hand. And I you know, I've, hand. and I've heard lots of people say, Oh, cancel culture. It does not exist. It just doesn't exist at all. It's completely fake. And then, and then I kind of see it and I'm like, um, and there was this one podcaster I listened to and it was this, this fascinating um, view of cancel culture. It's the, 
idea that there are the unredeemable and the unredeemable must be ostracized. And it's an interesting idea because it's, it's the opposite of Christianity. It's like Christianity is like, okay, there are people who can be redeemed. And uh, I think it's an interesting view of it. Um, and it brings up the question, are people completely unredeemable? And I think the answer is yes, obviously. I mean, we, we, we're both talking about somebody who we, we think might be unredeemable. But can people be saved? I think it, for me, I think communication um, and, you know, you know, fighting bullying, that might be I mean, I really want to open up the table for this because this is a very touchy subject. Um, here's the best way I can use an example. Um, Forrest Gump. He was seen as like this weirdo, this, you know, person with mental issues, you know, like, oh, he, he's a weirdo. Don't talk to him. When he went through stuff, people were like, you know what? We were wrong. You know, like, like don't kick somebody out because of like you know, what they go through, because guess what? That can be the nicest person you'll ever meet if you can just talk to them and help them through tough times. I never even knew that you were Jewish. And the fact that I know that I had those horrid views just makes me sick to my stomach. But redeemability is absolutely possible for some of us. You know, people who have a good intent, who want to help others, who want everyone to be happy. That's uh, you know, something, to be, uh, something to be said about that. Um, but yeah, very, very crazy subject. Um, it's very important to um, know that there are some people who are redeemable and bullying is a huge problem. Um, in California, um, there's something called the, the two-party consent rule, which has to do with the recording. Like, So like, let's say if you are being bullied by a coworker, you can't record them in California without saying, hey, you are being recorded. But what that ends up doing is enabling bullying. It enables uh, workplace harassment. It enables all that stuff. And they have something kind of similar to that in uh, Chicago. It's actually illegal to record a police officer, I think, while, while they're doing their job. And that's just like, to me, that's, that's, that's crazy. The way we, we, we get rid of bad apples in the workplace, in the police force, everywhere in our personal lives is we have to have a chance to make them accountable to their actions. And I think that's a very serious point that needs to be uh, brought up for sure. I'm really curious what everyone's opinion about this because this is a really touchy issue. This is an issue that has um, gripped the fandom, the idea of um, extremists in the fandom, how to deal with them, how to change their mind, how to bring them to the bright side or to ostracize them. I mean, ostracization right now is very fashionable. I grew up in a Christian family. I went to a Christian high school, Christian grade school, all down the line is Christian. And I believe in the same values, even though some people say, oh, you're brainwashed, oh, this and that. I mean, I've seen the works that Christianity has done, Catholic Roman Catholicism, by the way, but that's an entirely different topic. Anyway, the point is, I refuse to believe that everyone is irredeemable. I have seen firsthand that this is so, and I think that those who just hide away or who just are too lazy to try to help some people, I know it sounds kind of bad sometimes, but part of that blame is on you for not attempting. Exactly. Always, always try is my point is don't give up. Yeah. And there's always going to be those also, people stubborn as a mule, right? Okay. Sorry, Jason. I interrupted you. No, no, no. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. And also, whether you like it or not, that could be you. That could be you that you're not helping. You could be in the same situation. Well, what if you and them switch lives? Put, your, put yourself in their shoe, man. See how they feel. <laughs> Yeah, th there is some sort of privilege about being in an environment full of people with just the right ideas with, with the, you know, with, I feel like the diversity is always a privilege, you know, because that type of education is important. Like, let's say if, uh, you know, um, you've never, I don't know. You, 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 okay, here's a good example. You've never met a furry before. You're not. Let's assume you're not a furry. You've never met a furry before. Every time you look at the news, you see furry being just this insane, wild person who doesn't know that they're a human. All the time you'd be like, "Wow, this is just a furries are just freaks." Oh my god, you know, I gotta you know avoid them. You know, they're, they're completely crazy. But what if one day you talk to them and go like, "Hey, look, I think you're crazy. <laughs> I think this is not. I think you should start waking up and realizing that you're human." And I think once you do that, you realize, "Oh, wait a minute, 
furries do understand they're humans, but most of them, you know, they're not as crazy and they can be influenced to, you know, brought to the, uh, <laughs> but woof, woof. Yeah. But ultimately, I mean, um, meow. yeah. Yeah. So ultimately these insane, crazy, uh, caricatures don't help anyone. Um, they just demonize, you know? So the most important thing is to, um, understand everyone's human. You want to, you want to make society better. You want to do that. Um, there's nothing wrong with um, bringing people to the light. Give fight bad ideas with good ideas. I mean, that's my view on it. I don't know. I'm curious about other people's view, of course. Okay, I guess that's good. Any any last comments? Uh, any last words? <laughs> any last words? Yes, I do. What's up? So, to the people that are possibly going through what I'm going through, hang in there. That person that will help you get out of that hole is coming soon. Trust me, don't don't expect to be there forever because you won't. Because either the whole world will turn on, turn on you and it's going to feel unbearable. Don't, don't think that like that. Because there's people like me, there's people like everybody else that, that think second chances still exist. So if you ever need somebody to talk to, I'm always available. And, yeah. um, and you know, obviously, and you're not the only one that's felt, you know, ostracized there's a lot of people in the trans community they're dealing with transphobia homosexual people dealing with homophobia um so yeah yeah there's a lot of people who feel disenfranchised in the fandom in lots of different ways so um i think this is certainly a great fandom to feel like you have some belonging but also um get get um understand uh what sort of mindset we had to have to have a, a better future for everyone you know if we keep pushing people away and hiding the bad side under the rug, like people say, history will repeat itself. We have to learn from these mistakes. Don't hide it. Work your way through it or else it will happen again. There's also a quote. I was watching The Martian the other day, and the one quote that I had to identify a lot was, life is a series of problems. If you find the next problem you solve it and if you continue this process you go home mm -hmm. or this general concept that there's no getting around an issue you need to face it and that's the only way that you really develop that's the only way that you show some of these people i'm still here yep yep so uh, uh any other last comments before i uh, stop uh, before i wrap up oh yeah don't forget to kiss your homies good night Kiss your good night. Very good. All right. Let's stay in school. Stay in school. Oh, man. 10 out of 10. Yes, and do not do not join white supremacy. That's yes, no, bad no. idea. Never do that. Bad. bad, bad idea. Trust me. Don't be edgy. Bad, bad guys cougar. aren't cool. That's very bad, you know. And uh, Bad guys aren't cool. Only the jokers. Yes. All right. Also, very good. Rawr. Very good. Very good. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, yes, a, a Sunny Bean, Jerry, Jay, Jason, Atticus, Alex, thank you for, for touching on all these little topics. Um, so everybody have a good day. Um, Wait, I got one more thing. Sure. Coca-Cola is better than Pepsi. I don't want to hear it. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, I'm sorry to tell you, but root beer is more superior. Disgusting. Y'all. Y'all, y'all gotta cut that out of your diet. Replace it with some aspartame. With some aspartame. Mm, delicious aspartame. Paws are better than maws! Okay. Tails, though. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this wacky, wacky episode. This is going to be episode fifty. Woohoo! So, everybody, have a have a good everything day, and uh, bye bye. Oh, bye.